Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, of course, and today we're gonna cook up these two huge bone-in French ribeye steaks from Costco. These are actually from Swift, but uh, they've sold them at Costco, picked them up. We're gonna use the Meat Stick 4X on both of these today. Um, this is the new meat stick that has four points of temperature that it reads. It's got a predictive time that it will tell you when it's gonna be done. We're gonna do one of these sous vide and then sear, and one we're gonna do as a reverse sear, and that's gonna be fun. All right, guys, I'm gonna get this started. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter. Sous vide and chilling from fire and water. All right, also, like I said, I'm going to do one in the sous vide, which I got it heating up right now. Um, we're going to do it for about three and a half hours. Uh, just, we're not trying to really cook it too long. We don't need to tenderize it. We're just going to go ahead and try to cook it all the way through and render some of that fat. So I'm doing 134 degrees is what I'm going to do it at for about three and a half, four hours. Then the other one, we're going to just reverse sear, and I'm not going to put that on until well, probably about an hour before we're ready to start uh, getting the other one out of the sous vide. But what I am going to do is vacuum seal both of these, but first I'm going to season them up. So I'm going to use the black garlic and coffee seasoning of mine. Um, it's got some good salt, garlic, black garlic of course, the coffee, black pepper, all that. And then we're going to put a little bit of our all-purpose on there just to give it a little bit more salt, some other flavor profiles. And we're going to let this, one of these is going to sit in the refrigerator and kind of dry brine while the other one is cooking in the sous vide. The reason we don't need to dry brine the one that's cooking in the sous vide is because when you cook sous vide, it actually speeds up the brining process. So the whole, put it, just putting it in the sous vide with the seasonings is going to let this... Uh, brine up just fine. Doesn't need any extra brining time. I'm going to put the meat stick in the uh, one that we're going to sous vide, vacuum seal them up, and we'll get them going. All right, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I got my meat stick active here, and the one we're going to sous vide is going to be the smaller one here. So I'm just going to take the thickest part, make sure I jam it right in the middle, and put it all the way up to the hilt here because it's got three different points of measurement it's going to do inside the meat to tell me predict the time that's going to be done it's going to be difficult because this is in the sous vide so it's really not going to work the same as if it w as the reverse sear is going to it's going to read the ambient temperature and what it's going to do with that it'll just tell me that it's 134 degrees pretty much the whole time it's in the sous vide, but when it gets off the sous vide and when we're searing it, that's when we're really going to pay attention to it to make sure we do not go over the 134 degrees. We're going to do the same thing with this one, but right now I'm just going to vacuum seal them both and put them in. This one's going to go in the sous vide bath and this one's going to go in the refrigerator for about uh, two hours or so. And then when this one gets about an hour out, we're going to start reverse searing the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, guys. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. Well, here you have it. This here's the one we're going in the sous vide with. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. It's still got about another 10 degrees to go before it starts counting down. But it's okay to put it in there just a little early. It's really still going to be in there the same amount of time. So that's that. It's going to start reading the uh, ambient temperature of whatever the water is pretty soon on the meat stick and it'll still tell me what the internal temp is. So here's the one we're going to reverse sear. I'm just going to stick this in the fridge, like I said, till about an uh, hour before this one is ready to go. We're going to start reverse searing it on the Rectech Bullseye Deluxe and we're going to monitor the internal temperature with the meat stick 4X because I really want to try out that predictive time and it's going to do a lot of uh, a lot better job on a reverse sear than it will on the sous vide bath because the sous vide bath is a straight 133 temperature 
We're really not monitoring it to get, or 134 temperature. We're really not monitoring to get to 134 because we're gonna leave it there for a little while. So I just want it to stay there and not go over. So, all right guys, I'm gonna get this in the fridge. I'll see you guys in about two, two and a half hours. All right guys, so this is the new app here that goes with the 4X. And if you can see, you got your internal temp there with the big circle and your external temp. And then right in between your time there is where your uh, remaining time will be. All right all, I am back and I did take this, uh, the reverse sear one out of the fridge and out of the plastic. I put my meat stick 4X right here in the deepest part, right in the middle, just like I did with the sous vide one. Sous vide one's been going uh, for about an hour and a half or so. It's still got some time to go, about another two hours that uh, I'm timing. So I've got my Rectech uh, Bullseye Deluxe. I set it at low, which is right around the 190 to 200 range. And what we're going to do is keep it there for about, oh, 45 minutes to an hour. I might spritz this a little to try to get some smoke to it. Then we're going to slowly crank that temperature up while we're monitoring the internal temp, making sure that we don't get uh, anywhere near the 134. I'm going to probably stop uh, the reverse sear at about 129, maybe 128, because I want to give it uh, a little bit of room to have some carryover cooking there. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get this on. I'll take you over to the rec tech. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get this ribeye on now. It's Tommy Hawk. As you can see, we're right at 200. It just it overshot a little bit, and um, now it's coming down some. It'll uh, probably hover right there around the 190 to 200 and around 200 or so. So that's it. We're going to leave it in there, let it kind of slowly smoke. Then um, we're going to go ahead and sear it off. Right at the same time we're searing the um, tomahawk from the sous vide. So, all right, I'll see you guys when we're getting ready to sear these off. We'll monitor the temperature during the time. All right, guys, so this is the reverse sear, and this is what you're normally going to look at. It's going to have your internal temperature with your target that you're looking for. You're also going to have your external temperature and the target that you had picked for that as well. So it's uh, pretty well laid out with the chart, especially. But one of the newer things here is you're going to have an estimated done this time. So it's going to give you an estimated time that your food will be done right there. All right, guys, well, let's take a look at the one that's on the reverse sear and the Rectech here. <clears throat> it's now just starting to climb up. It's about 112 now, it's saying. So it's got some pretty good smoke looking to it. If you guys can see that. Let's get you over there. Take a look at that. It's got some nice color to it. That uh, coffee rub works much better than any of those other black rubs that um, just have activated charcoal in them for sure. All right guys, so about mm, 10 or 15 minutes, we'll be searing that up. I'll be right back. All right guys, here's the chart for the sous vide uh, steak and it looks like it's moving along just fine. We'll be done in a few. All right guys, so my reverse sear one is ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get the sous vide one out. Turn that off. Get this out. We're going to pat it dry. Get it out of this bag real quick. I'm going to keep the meat stick in so we can make sure when we're searing it we don't go over our medium rare. I don't want it to go past like 135. All right, check that out. Looking pretty tasty. All we're gonna do right now, pat it dry, get as much of that moisture off of there as we can. We're gonna put just a little bit more seasoning on. Really probably doesn't need any, but I wanna put just a little bit more on because we did lose some in the bag.
Check them out on Amazon, Walmart.com, or my website, FireAndWaterCooking.com. All right, guys, so now we're going to get over to the sear station. I'm going to show you how I got that set up, and then we're going to sear these bad boys off. All right, guys, I want to show you my searing station here. I got charcoal, hot, ready to go, searing mode. I'm going to go take my grill grates here, and I'm going to put them on. And if you notice, one of them here, I have some pellets in, if you can see that. On this part here, I have pellets in there, and this one I don't. And what I'm going to do, since the sous vide steak, which is here, did not get any smoke to it because it wasn't reverse seared. We're going to get some smoke to it by using these uh, pellets that are on my grill grates. I'm also going to hit my grill grates, just a little bit of spray oil, just so they don't stick too bad. We're going to close this up, let this get really super hot, and then we're going to stick our steaks on there. Let me get these back on a rack here. All right, we'll give me about five minutes for this to get heated up really well. And then we're going to go ahead and sear these up. One of the things I love about this M grills, guys, is I can get the firebox right up next to my grill grates there. And you see they're smoking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and put my reverse sear one on first. Right over here, I just heard it sizzle. And I'm going to put my sous vide one on. That's the one that's sitting right on top of those pellets that are starting to smoke. So we're going to get some smoke on that. The other one didn't have, or the, uh, that one didn't have the uh, ability to have smoke. So I'm going to close this up for a minute and we'll be back in a minute when we're flipping this over. All right, guys, I'm just going to monitor these and make sure they don't go over my 134 temperature. It looks like they're doing okay right now when they're searing. All right, guys, let's take another look at these and give them a turn. We're just about done searing these up here. Woo, they're smelling good. All right, guys, next time I see you, we'll be on the cutting board. All right, guys, I lost my audio file, but we're going to go ahead and do this manually anyway. So here they are, guys. This one here on the right is the uh, reverse sear. The other one on the left is a sous vide. You can tell that the sear marks, the grill marks on the uh, sous vide one look a little bit darker and more pronounced than the reverse sear. And that's because the reverse sear got more smoke to it. Uh, when it was cooking in the smoker. We used the same seasoning, both the, the black garlic and coffee, and all-purpose black garlic, of course, on the, both of these, which gave them a really good dark color as well. So, like I said, these both turned out really well. The, the Meat Stick 4X did a great job of monitoring the temperature, letting me know uh, just about when it was going to be done and ready to cook and sear. Um, I really didn't have any problems at all with it. It worked well. It didn't lose signal or anything like that. And um, it really, the, the time was within a couple minutes of when it was uh, going to be ready. And like I said, we're going to go ahead and get these cut open here and show you just how well the doneness is. And like I said, it, it did read the, the doneness uh, level the whole time on the sous vide one. So we're going to go ahead and open these up. First, we're going to go ahead and open up the uh, sous vide one just so we can see. Take a look at the doneness level on it right here. Going to do right by the cap just so we can get a nice cut, see the doneness. And of course, it's going to be all the way through from top to bottom. No gray scale on that. It's a perfect medium rare. We're going to do the reverse sear. And actually, there shouldn't be a whole lot of gray on that as well. So as you can see, yeah, it looks really good. They both are very comparable. When we're doing these thick ribeye steaks like this, guys, and people want to compare reverse sear versus the um, sous vide, I think they're both very comparable. Um, you will um, probably lose a little bit more moisture on the reverse sear than you will the sous vide. But let's go ahead and taste these guys. Go ahead and cut a nice chunk out of the reverse sear. See how that tastes. But you can see the doneness is perfect. Perfect medium rare all the way through. Nice smoky flavor. I tell you what, 
uh, reverse sear and sous vide are really great ways to make a steak. Uh, as far as one being better than the other, uh, it's a coin flip to me. So let's go ahead and do the sous vide. And like I said, these are the ones, this is the one where we did put the pellets on the grill grates. So we did get a little bit of smoke to it. And check it out, it's nice and tender, nice and juicy. Got that little hint of smoke. Having that smoke right on the grill grates, right up next to it, doing this during the sear, really helped it out. But I tell you what, the reverse sear is just a little bit more smoky, of course, but either one of these guys, you'd be happy with either one of them, that's for sure. I think the 4X did a really good job of uh, keeping the uh, temperatures in line and letting us know when it was going to be done. Um, I'm going to be doing some more tests on this, but so far I really like the, the meat stick 4X, so check it out on Amazon. Make sure you check out the Fire & Water Cooking Edible Creations Seasonings and Sauces on Amazon as well. And thanks again. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you on the next Fire & Water Cooking video.